My friend standing next to me, this is his first time speaking at DEF CON. <laughs> his name is Shang Ma. And um, he wants to play with malware injection with, ex with exploitive thoughts. It, um, I don't know if I said that right, but let's uh, hear him explain it. And uh, before we get started, um, I'm going to give him a good congratulations. Are you already, you already drinking? Yeah, I ordered the drink. <laughs> oh. OK. So um, hello, everyone. I'm, my name is Ma Sheng Hao, and I'm just a master's degree student from Taiwan. And I'm also a security researcher from um, Steve Root and TDOH Hacker. Um, um, this is my first uh, speak on Dev Council. So I'm a little bit, a little bit nervous, and I just drink less shot, and it's very spicy. So <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. So let's do it. So uh, it's it's the agenda. Uh, first, I'm going to talk about. What is malware ingestion? <music> vulnerability inspired by Paul Scher, uh, Paul, Paul Longer. <laughs> so, so let's quick, quickly review what is malware ingestion. And in the past, malware ingestion is used for some bypassing some uh, production, like bypass wireless tracking, bypass antivirus, or privilege escalation. And for example, with DLSI loading and digital signature, we can bypass the antivirus. And with remote inject and wireless process, and we can bypass the wireless wireless. And with the ingest, inject uh, explorer and DL siloing and self ele elevated service, we can bypass Windows USC production. So, and then there are several well known techniques, like um, we, we have known about low, low technology about inject, like share code, share code inject, DL inject, process hollowing, and uh, thread hijacking, atom bombing, and memory export. And in my presentation, I will focus on how to do malware ingestion in exploit way, how to do it. And if you want to do a malware ingestion, actually there are four challenges for you, you will meet. The first one is, what is target? You, you, you should choose a good target to, um, to ingestion. And it's, this, this target must be meaningful. Then secondary, where to place? And a, a memory space for us to place our malware, malware code in remote process. Then thirdly, we, we not need to know how to write malware code from remote. This is, and finally, we, we need to find a way out to run the malware code from the remote. This is the most difficult part for us. And you can create a new thread and hijack a current thread or whatever. So uh, this is an interesting case for us. We are talking about as power loader. And what is power loader? Uh, power loader is known as extra window vulnerability. So what it is? And there is a uh, Windows data, Windows data. Uh, window data in explorer process memory. And those data decide, decide how your GUI, how your window is look like. And this is how it's going. First, operation system will send message to your explorer. Secondary, explorer fetch the V table from, from those data. Finally, explorer invoke the Kobe functions on lay V table. And you, you will say, what's the problem? It, it seems very normal, it's generally. So what's the problem? The problem is how Explorer fetch lay V table, because we know uh, Explorer will invoke the Kobe function from V table. So 
The problem is how Explorer fetch the V table. Actually, it fetch the V table by uh, by a Windows API named get window long. So we can easily modify the result of get window long API. Just use set window long API to change the V table address. So let's put it all together. We can know if we can inject a fake V table, then, then we can use set window long API to point the V table address to the fake the, the fake V table. And then we can if we send any message to Explorer, Explorer will invoke our malware code from the fake V table. So if you uh, I, I give a payload here and we just prepare our share code and prepare our me memory layout on lab V table, then use set window long PTI API to modify the V table address of target, aka Explorer. Then uh, ju just send a message to lab Explorer and we'll trigger our payload. So let's see a quick, quick demo. Uh, here, here, ah, okay. So, and here you can see um, this test on um, Windows 7, and uh, here is my share code. Then it's pretty hard to use big, big screen. <laughs> And then you can see I prepare our memory layout and inject the fact V table into target explorer and send a message to explorer. You can see if we compile and you can see uh, explorer is, is crashed and down and, in, and run our shell code on the remote. <sighs> okay. So, there are three more, three more vulnerability from we, we are talking about next. First one is OLE drop enter event. And what it is? And if you do some reversing stuff, you, you will see like those, those code on, on the screen. And Explorer use global add atom to keep a string name OLE drop target interface, this string in the, by, ju just keep it by global add atom API. Then you can see when Explorer try to register a drag and drop event, you can see Explorer stole the drop target structure in OLE drop target interface properties. So, and you, you ask about what is drop target? This structure is used for what? And you can see drop target is actually it is a V table class. Keep every copy function address of drag and drop event. So explore use and when when you try to drag a file, drag a file, any files to explorer or inside explorer, you you will trigger a function named privilege drag and drop. And you can see in this function, Explorer will try to use get prop w API to fetch lay v table a class and invoke the function on the v table when you check any files inside Explorer. And you was, you, you ask about why is the problem? The problem is it's pretty easy for us to modify v table address by another API is set prop w. And if we use this API, can modify the V table address. So what we need to do is inject a fake V table and point the OLE job target interface, the properties to our fake V table. So finally, so let's 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 see how it goes. You you can see Jack files. If we Jack and files in inside the Explorer. Then operation system, operation system send a message to our explorer. 
Then Explorer fetch our fact V table by get property W API because we, we just use set prop W API to change the V table address. Then invoke the Explorer will invoke the malware code from our fact V table. So if we need to prepare, if, if, if we prepare the, uh, our share code and the V table on the correct, correct me memory address, then use set prop W API to modify the V table address of lay window data. And whenever ju just explore, send, or receive any drag and jar, drag and jar event, the message, then Explorer will invoke the malware code of our, 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 our share code. So it's the first one. Uh, you, you can see how we inject the drag and jar event of Explorer. Uh, here. Um, And first, you can see it's our share code. And and here, what we need to do is uh, prepare our V table address and the V table address prepare our share code address. The explorer will call the function on memory plus C. And we write the process memory, this share code into the V table and the share code into target process. Then use, just use set prop A API to modify the OLE job target interface properties. So you can see if we compile, uh, oops, uh, oops. And we compile and inject the share code and the V table into target. And there's nothing happen. But if we drag any file into Explorer, you can see there's a message box there is from share code. Then you can see we can from look, look it on test manager. And you can see it's from Explorer. This this message box is come from pop, pop up from from the explorer. So, oh, so silent. And the second the, the second case is com CTO subclass event. And first, explorer keep the UX subclass this property string by global add item API again. Explorer invoke master subclass plus function if it receive any message. If in this function you can see, Explorer call, call the function fast get subclass header and to, to fetch the window data. Then verify the window data we just get by Another function is enter subclass frame function. Then finally, if the, way the, the, the window data is correct, and Explorer will try to invoke the function on window data. So let's see how to how Explorer check the window data and um, how to call the function. And in enter subclass friend function, we, we, we just said about uh, it's used for verify lab window data is correct or not. So on, only thing we need, need to care about is uh, here, um, the V table plus A, the function address cannot be new. Uh, it should be new, or it will fetch the bad memory address and cause explorer crash. So we need to prepare our V table. We, we need to keep it null on the window data plus A. And in 
enter subclass Kobe function, you can see the V table is actually it is dynamic. And so it's probably have a rule. Actually, on, on, the, on this slide, you can see uh, Explorer have a rule to get copy function dynamically in our V table address. So uh, we can use this rule to, to check wh which address is our shellcode address should be put at. And finally, Explorer invoke the address we get just on the window data to process those message, any message. So we just need to prepare another V table and our share code in the V table address and put it all, all together on the correct memory address. Then just use set prop API to modify the V table address and just use send message to trigger a message function of Explorer. Um, this is another more interesting case here. And you can see it's a meta exploit I built on my PC and uh, it's, it's finished and uh, Windows Defender is open and I just took this video yesterday. And whenever I just click the POC, and you can see that there's nothing happened for user. Victim don't, don't see anything there. But our meta exploit here is get a reverse share. And we can do anything like uh, LS, system info, and even we can in, is it execute a CMD, you can see Windows, De Windows Defender, De Defender is not happening any, any old, not, not protect us. And you can see the CMD is come from Explorer. OK, so the final interesting case is threat hijacking is uh, this case is low, low vulnerability code is in, inside the Windows 10. So if you use Windows 7 and Windows 8, it's, you, you are safe. Yes, it's, very, it's pretty ridiculous. And every process is created on Windows operating system by that API is create a process, this API. And kernel will create a new process and map each session into the new process memory. Then create a new thread, then put, then point the PC register to the program entry, aka address of entry. And first, thread, thread did, did, didn't just jump into the uh, address of entry. First, Thread will call the LDR initialized thunk to repair the import address table, export directory, and relocation information. And the interesting thing is, you, 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 you will see now, for now, uh, Thread should ju ju just jump into the address of entry, right? But no, for Windows 10, Thread will check a uh, variables is uh, before thread jump into the program entry, every thread will jump into another, uh, another address is a address of LDR delicated RTL user thread star, these variables, if it's not null. So if it's not null, and just jump into it. So you can see it's pretty easy for us to abuse. So just put a share code to the target process and write a share code address into LDR delicated RTL user thread star. This vulnerability, oh, it, its name is very long. <laughs> and every, every thread must jump into the share code address if it's created on the new target process. So it's the, let, let's see the final demo here. 
Yeah, um, you can see it's a uh, Chrome, and I open a new Chrome layer, and here I just uh, on only thing I I need to do is uh, to to get the actually LD a delicate RTL user thread start is located at and which which address. And when we get the address, and we just write our shell code address into the variables, then if cron, it, it, you, you can see I just inject the shell code and the variable in, on the target process, and nothing happened there. But if we try to browse a new website like google.com, and you can see there's the CMD come from Chrome. Uh, yeah, thank you. You can see it's, the CMD is come from Chrome. So, okay. So, think, think about listening.